human nature tells us that we protect our family, we protect our children. Robert Fisher had the picture-perfect life. He had the wife, he had the two children. Once you start to dive a little bit deeper, I think into anyone's life, things can come out. Obviously, there was something more lurking there. You ready, cowboy? Him and Mary got married pretty, fairly young, you know, had Brittany and Bobby, and from the outside, everything looked picture perfect, right? So we got a car stuck in my daughter's hair. Yeah. The victim is Brittany Jean Fisher, age five. All indications are that he was a family man, um, husband, father of two own dogs, he liked the outdoors. Just an average person, just an average Scottsdale resident. It seemed like it was a young family's starting up would be a good place to start a home, would be a good place to be. So there was, uh, the entire neighborhood was, was actually very quiet and just very, um, very small town. The children were found in their beds. Mary was found in bed. All three um, had their throats slashed. Mary, in addition, suffered a gunshot wound to the head. We looked uh, for Robert. We could not find another body inside the fire. Uh, we did find a, a gas line that was disconnected. There's probably a candle or something left burning to where that became that ignition source. He had a gun safe. He had several rifles and guns. They were all locked up. The one thing was missing. There was an empty gun box uh, from the revolver that we believe is the gun that was used um, and the gun that he took with him. The family videos and other things were found in the gun safe. They must have meant something. Who is that? Robert. Hi, Robert. <laughs> Robert worked at the Mayo Clinic as a radiation tech. He had an outside uh, persona, like a work persona, as well as a home life that might have been different. We know around 10 p.m. there was probably um, a verbal fight. And then at 10.45 p.m., we see Mr. Fisher driving Mary's forerunner in an ATM surveillance footage where he's taking out money. Um, he's wearing a, a certain baseball cap. It looks like he had withdrawn uh, $280 from the ATM. Really, back then, that might have been the most he could take out at the time. He's been on the most wanted list for about 19 years now. Until he's apprehended or, or we know he's deceased, he would probably remain on the top 10. The working theory is that um, the murder had occurred prior to that and that he had left from there to withdraw the money and then disappeared from that point. Um, it's possible that it worked in reverse, uh, but I think with the timing of the argument that the neighbor heard, uh, it makes better, makes better sense as far as the timeline that, it, that the murders occurred first. There could have been no one else. There was no other suspects or no other people involved in this. The next sighting that we had was on April 20th, and that was finding his forerunner up near Young. His dog, Blue, was um, actually loose and walking around the vehicle. And once the sheriff's deputies arrived and they realized that he was not there, is he gone, did he disappear, or is he, is he hiding somewhere nearby? He wasn't a stranger to the outdoors. He was familiar with the area that the vehicle was found in. There are caves, you know, miles and miles around that area. Some are small, some are large, and they're excellent hiding places. If you have resources, light, food, and water, 
You can stay indefinitely as long as you have oxygen. There are a few caves in Arizona and in this area that have water in them. I know one of the last purchases he made that we tracked down was some water purification tablets. If Fisher did spend time doing his homework, he could survive essentially indefinitely out here. I have been caving in this particular area since the mid-1970s. To the east of here on White Mountain Apache tribe land, they have a cave and they had a partial map of the cave, so he must be there. We were on call, but uh, we were not dispatched to come up. They had an incomplete map. We have remapped it and found a bunch more passage. If they had tried to go in, he would quite easily have been able to get off the map where they couldn't find him. We are right here now. We're down this slope here, going down here. We know he's armed and we, he knows what he did. Now there's an officer safety aspect to it. Is this going to end in, a, in gunfire? Is this going to end in a fight with him? So it became sort of a search, but it was also a tactical search to make sure that we locate where he is. That has several hundred feet of cave behind it. We were doing what we could with technology and we were using um, lights and as many cameras as we can, even, um, even chemical munitions and things to try to, um, to try to eliminate or say, is there somebody in here? I don't know that I would call him, you know, an, an expert survivalist. And after talking to some of his family, you know, it was more of that he liked to recreate outdoors. They wouldn't necessarily describe him as a as an expert survivalist. We've already been down through the loop, through most of the passage, specifically looking for his stuff. No feces in here. Uh, no clothing. No. Um, Gosh, no evidence that anybody spent any time in here. No food containers. That whole scene is, is missing. If uh, we do another search in this area, this area is cleared. The other caves in the area are a different story. Were all of them searched? I'm not sure. Let's go. Let's get out of here. I had a picture of somebody that I wanted to send to you. It's familiar to, I mean, his features are familiar. We'll generally get anywhere from two to three a week. Yes, yeah, so there's all the copies and different things of that. No, no worries. So these are tips, but then here's medical records and different things. So everything we've made copies of, we've put, we've put together here. You know, where I saw a guy in San Diego that looked like him. You know, she was at the, here's a caller. She was at the Walmart in Little Rock, Arkansas. And a person who seemed quite like Robert Fisher uh, was in the store with her. Here's, here's Canada. One of the interesting tips we got from Canada was um, an individual that very much resembled Robert Fisher. Because he did have, if you look at him, he had the back scar. Um, he had the missing tooth. You had media descending like crazy on sleepy little White Rock. Someone who is a purely uh, innocent bystander who was wrongly identified and had their life turned upside down by basically the SWAT team kicking their door in. Out of all the people, you know, in the world though, there's going to be some out there that very much resemble him. And that's a lot of times where we get the tips from is people that just very closely resemble Robert Fisher. My client is not Robert Fisher, was not Robert Fisher. That individual, though, was fingerprinted, was positively identified as another individual, and we're confident, obviously, that that was not Mr. Fisher. You can alter your fingerprints, uh, but every alteration that you would do will become then your own unique fingerprint. Ah! 
to find Robert's DNA or to use compare Robert's DNA to a person who we believe to be Robert Fisher. The concern that we have is we don't have a, a pure sample from him. That was our most promising lead uh, to this date. On Facebook, Robert Williams Fisher. I don't know if it's the same guy, but the, the face looks the same. We have not had a confirmed uh, sighting of Robert Fisher where we can say, yes, that was definitely him. We're looking for a person who is now in his 60s. His physical appearance could be uh, dramatically changed. He could be anybody. He could be a farmhand working in a very small rural community. He could be a, a, an anonymous person waiting tables at a, in a big city somewhere else. Over 20 years, this case has evolved a lot of mythology around it. A lot of people ask me about the dog. You know, they have their theories about the dog being found at the vehicle, and well, if the dog was well alive, and obviously he's dead out there somewhere because he wouldn't leave the dog. The other side of that would say that somebody came and picked up Robert, or he left in another vehicle, and that's why the dog stayed at their last place he knew was the car. Some people became dog experts, or what would the dog do? And we tried to get into the mind of the dog. This is someone who's capable of killing his children and his wife um, and absconding. Then I think he's fully capable, you know, of leaving the dog at the vehicle. Here's our chickens. Robert made this chicken coop. There's a lot of, you know, speculation um, and kind of rumors about affairs that Robert might have been having. Yeah, there's Farmer Brown and his wife. I think we do have some information suggesting he could have been having affairs, but we never identified any specific individuals. Boom. It's like a hot potato, and this is over left hole, and it's quit. Yeah, I, yeah. I, get back. Get back in the circle. We've watched the home movies. We, it appears that he's a loving father on that inside. What monster dwells behind those eyes? The possibility that he could have traveled down to uh, town to Mexico and, and points beyond Central America or South America is extremely plausible. 20 years ago, prior to September 11th, well, you could come and go across the border uh, with a driver's license. That's the best guess as to where he is. The world is our map. It would very much surprise me if he was living off the grid for 20 years. Is it a possibility that he just went up there and committed suicide in some place that we weren't able to find him? <laughs>